103. We're going to stay there for quite a while. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Adonai, Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shama, all kind of names for God, Yeshua, Jesus, King, Lord, amen. Where I'm from, it was Lord. Lord have mercy. Amen. Everybody say, Lord have mercy. Come on, say it again. Put a little emphasis on it. Lord, have mercy. I've been hearing that all week long. People say, Lord, have mercy. And I thought, they don't, I'm not hearing Lord. I'm hearing Lord. But I know exactly what they're talking about. You know he knows exactly what you're talking about? He knows when you call in his name. He knows when you need help. He knows when you are in dire straits. Amen. That's not just a rock band. Amen. That's a place that many of us have been in life. And when I say, Lord, have mercy, how about you? The Scripture teaches us that if God has mercy on us, we ought to have mercy on others. Amen. So it's important that happens. So we're going to be in Psalm 103. The word mercy is blessing that is an act of divine favor or compassion, or compassion, a fortunate circumstance. Amen. In other words, when you didn't deserve it, God gave you mercy. The Scripture says the mercies of God are new every morning, which tells me almost as if you didn't realize it, God hit a reset when you got up. Amen. He started it over again for you to have mercy. I, I have been pastoring now since 1993. I was an evangelist from 90 to 93, 1990 93. I was a youth pastor from 86 to 1990. I was in college the other four years in which I preached every summer while I was in school. I started preaching when I was 19. But here's the thing. At 61 years of age, I can't remember a time in my life when people needed mercy more than they do today. Mercy, I mean, it's like before we just kind of moved through life, but mercy. Mercy. There are people that have uh, have endured the passing of siblings. There are people that have endured the, the breakups of life. I have friends. Uh, of course, my my wife right now. Uh, she's had a couple of really rough days fighting cancer. Uh, we need mercy. Whether we deserve it or not, we need mercy. I have friends that's had surgeries that have have been. Uh, an, um, it, 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 if you go in hoping for the best. Amen. And then you had to accept the verdict, and it just come out not the way you wanted it to. Hallelujah. I've seen over and over. This whole week, I, I was at a, like I said, at a bar yesterday, I was at a benefit to, to benefit someone, to bless them. Amen. I, I went to a restaurant after that and, and met with some folk who had, had gone through cancer treatment. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. And many times we focus only on ourselves and we forget other people need mercy. Can I get an amen? Amen. And you are a not only recipient of mercy, but you are a conduit of mercy to other people. And mercy begots mercy. We'll talk about all of that. Now, if you have 103 verse 1, would you stand with me? We use the word, are you comfortable? Amen. Mercy, I'm, I'm going to walk you through the word mercy. And I'm going to use it as an opportunity to tell you that the word M is motivates. Mercy motivates. And nothing motivates me more than mercy, knowing that when I get up in the morning, the guilt of my sin, the penalty of death, all the things of hell that was waiting on me have been erased, expunged. God hit the finger, amen, hit the, hit the reset button. Start it all over again. Everybody say, start it all over again. That's good. It motivates me, man. And also, mercy endures. It doesn't stop. It keeps right on going. Amen. It's greater than any energizer battery. Can I get an amen? amen? Mercy redeems. It redeems us. It gives us a fresh start. Another thing it does, see, it comforts us. Knowing mercy. Mercy has a comfort level to it, and it yields. Very important. First, we start off with motivation. Psalm 103, verse 1. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Motivates. It's funny when you preach it like I do, every now and then you'll get a thought. And I got one right then. I don't know. I think I'll share it. When I was a young boy, I would slip across the fields of Charlie Johnson's field, go visit with my friend Rex Johnson, the same age. He had a white Brahma bull. Now, if you know anything about Brahma bulls, they can be agitated just a little bit. And I was told, never cut across the field, take the long way. Well, I wasn't listening, and I cut across the field, and that bull chased me. Man, and I'm going to tell you, I haven't ran seriously since I was 15. My foot's fused. But when I was a young boy, I was barefoot on the mountain running around. I could scat pretty quick. 
and you don't know how fast you can run until your life depends on it. Amen. I ran across that field. I slid under that barbed wire fence as fast as I could. And it reminded me of the story of the man that was out in the field, and a bull got after him, and he ran real fast, and he jumped as high as he could for a limb, and that bull went right after his backside, and he missed the limb. Mm. Motivated. But he caught it on the way down. I'll leave it right there. Some of y'all ain't even going to get that. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and compassion. Amen. Mercy. Who satisfies your desires with good things. Everybody say good things. Amen. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Father, thank you for the word of God. Anoint my lips. Our hearts to hear and receive. Some people came here today, Lord, receiving. They want to receive something, something to fill a void, something to bless them, something to help them along the journey. Only your word can do that. I can't do it. The people around can't do it, but your word can do it. So I pray, Lord, you open the vessels up and you pour in today your presence, your nature, who you are, God, to change their lives and benefit them in Jesus' name. And everyone shout. Come on, give me a bigger shout. Amen. God bless you. Those watching online, thank you for tuning in to HolyWild.tv. We're glad to have you watching today. Amen. We got folk, again, they watch from all over the country. We appreciate the footsteps. Or we are making the imprint, they say, out there in the Internet world. So we're just glad you guys are tuned in. God bless you. Mercy, mer mercy motivates. Mercy is goodness. When I read this passage, he forgives all your sins. He delivers you. He heals you satisfies you with good things. Romans chapter 2, verse 4, is a, uh, it blesses me because here's the thing. Many of you think that the only way that somebody comes to God is if life gets too rough. Boy, I tell you, we pray it down on people too. We'll pray, Lord, sick them. Go after them. Make life hell on them so they'll turn toward you. Amen. Everywhere they turn, put, put a hedge around them, meanness. Amen. Turn, but that ain't what the Scripture teaches. Watch what the Scripture says here. Amen. Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, tolerance and patience? The Bible says he's very tolerant toward us. Amen. Not realizing that God's kindness, one Scripture calls it goodness, God's goodness leads us toward repentance. It's when God's good to you and you realize how good he is to you and how good he's been to you that makes you want to repent. Now, again, the word repent is not a bad thing. It means a 180. It's to turn around. It's to get back into the penthouse, to get back to the highest place in life. Amen. It's not a bad thing to get back to where you ought to be. Can I get an amen? So it's the goodness of God that does that. I'll never forget years ago, my brother was, oh, I was probably 20, 21 in college, and my, uh, my brother got on my dad's Suzuki 650 and was, was going too fast, and he, he actually... Uh, didn't tell the whole truth to my dad. He said a dog ran out in front of him. The truth was he's going too fast, lost control, laid the bike down, skid along the asphalt, I don't know how many feet, but far enough to take the skin off of his back and his arm. I went to the hospital to see him. He was wrapped up, and he was unconverted at the time. He didn't really care a whole lot for God as I did because, again, I was in Bible college. And I walked in, and I looked at him. He's wrapped in yellow gauze, and he stretched out there, and I said, Jimmy. Hey, man, what's going on? I mean, you should have died out there. And he said to me, brother, stop praying for me. And I said, what? He said, stop praying for me. He said, this thing's killing me, man. He said, God's trying to get my attention. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. God didn't do this to you. Amen. God, did what God wasn't mean to you. Amen. The fact you hear means that God's good to you. Amen. It ain't meanness that leads us to God. It's the goodness of God. Can I get an amen? Sometimes we got to remind people just how good God is and how good he's been to us over and over again. Listen to the scripture. Amen. For he forgives all my sins, heals all my diseases, redeems my life from the pit. Would you give God time to heal you? Amen. Would you give God some, and you keep believing for it? Can I get an amen? Amen. You've got to keep believing for your healing. You've got to hang on to the Word of God. And, and not only that, to realize that how much God has already prevented so many bad things to have happened to you already. Amen. He's just been good to us. He crowns me with love and compassion to wear a crown. Amen. To be blessed in that way. He satisfies my desires with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagle. Amen. The eagle gets up in the, in the we were in Utah a week ago, and J-Bo and I were taking a walk around the community, a place called Tuella. 
Utah, and we looked up in the trees, there, and there was a bald eagle. I, I mean, just from here to the back wall, there's a bald eagle. And I don't care who you are, when you see a bald eagle, you stop and stare. I mean, there's something majestic about that bird. Amen. He just sitting right up there. And I saw a car, an SUV there, and a lady had her binoculars, and she's staring at it. Well, I'm walking, and I, 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 I'm, ho I'm thinking, this is, looks like a bald eagle. I'm walk looking also. So I walk over to her car, and I stick my eyes right inside her binoculars. At that moment, I startled her. She jumped back, looked at me. She said, well, what you do? I said, ma'am, ma'am, I'm sorry. Is that a bald eagle? She said, yes. We even had a nest of them around here, and we've been spying on them. You know, some subdivisions, ain't a whole lot to do other than bird watch. And so she said, we've been spying on them out here. Watch, you know, a bald eagle, when it gets up in the cleft of the rock and its eyes start getting cataracts on it and it's unable to see, it will start reaching back into its feathers and start pulling out the old feathers out of its uh, wings and as it does that every time it pulls a feather out it releases oil from its body and that oil will run over its face and and that oil will begin to take away the cataracts so that it can see again it will literally renew itself the bible tells us that we can be renewed i know it's true i've already heard it twice since i've been in here today getting old ain't for sissies but i can tell you this old folk god renews our strength Amen. He gives us a dance again, a step again. You just got to believe him for it. Can I get an amen? You got to hang on to Psalm 103 and realize, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Next thing, mercy endures. Psalm 103, verse 6. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, mm. his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. They, that word is compassionate. When you read that word, it's merciful and gracious. Slow to anger, abounding in love. Slow to anger. Amen. In a world where things are rusting and wearing out, it's good to know that God's mercy doesn't wear out, and it doesn't break, but it keeps enduring. Amen. That he gave favor to you when you know as I do, we didn't deserve it, but God was good to us. Amen. So when I'm reading, and this guy, this got to be something you look at this week, Psalm 103. You just keep reading this chapter all week until it gets inside of you. In Psalm 136, 26 times his mercy endures forever. There's no sin too great. There's no burden too heavy. No valley too deep. No night too long. His mercy is still going, 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 still enduring. His mercy is new every morning. Amen. And again, he hits the reset button. Psalm 103, verse 10 tells us his mercy redeems. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. Now, hear that, because I know we are all brought up into that understanding of sowing and reaping, that it is true. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. But let me tell you on the flip side, you did not get what you deserved. I have not got what I deserve. God has not punished us because of our sin, and yet he sent Jesus to make sure we'd be forgiven. Can I get an amen? Or repay us according to our iniquities. God didn't repay us, for it's high as the heavens are above the earth. I wonder how high that is. Do you know man hadn't reached it yet? We made it to the moon. We sent a little uh, remote control ATV to the Mars. At least that's what they're telling us. But we ain't made it no higher than that. We don't know what's beyond the sun. They're telling us there are other galaxies there. And the scripture tells us as high as as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. That God took our sin and he removed them as far. East never meets west. They keep rolling and keep going. Amen. They never meet. So God said, I'm going to take your sin. I, I want you, when God, God does this called comparison, how do you compare? Sister Dolly, I've heard you say this over and over about your grandkids. I love you to the moon and back. I love you to the moon and back. I've heard you say that. Sister Dolly has cut my hair for 20-something years. And every time she's there, she's telling me about her grandkids, and that's one statement she repeats over and over. I love you to the moon and back. Well, God says, I love you to the heavens and back. I take your sin as far as the east. It's from the west. Amen. That's how much I love you. And I mean, you may beat yourself up over the things you've done, your shortcomings, your failures, and your sins. But God said, if you ask me to forgive you, I will forgive you. Why? Because my mercy endures forever. Lord, have mercy. Can I get an amen? 
Amen. That, that's the goodness of God. Forgiveness. Look at here. For as, far, as far as the east is from the west, forgiveness is full. In other words, it's, uh, there's no disclaimers. It's all our sins. It's factual. God don't lie. He didn't lie to you. Amen. When he told you, he didn't lie to you. Amen. It's forever. He chooses not to hold them against us. That's why when we started up this morning, when you got up this morning, God hit the reset button and said, my mercy endures forever. Amen. Your mercy, you got mercy this morning, the fact that you woke up. Mercy comforts, Psalm 113, 103, verse 13. As far as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Some of you had terrible father figures. I know that. I've watched your life. I've seen it, uh, the way your actions have been. There's, there's not been a confidence around men. I see that because you had a terrible father figure. But don't let that stop you from understanding who our father is. Amen. Our Father, according to the Word of God, has compassion on His kids. So the Lord has compassion on those who fear Him. God loves us. You know, as a dad, I've, I have been uh, uh, misaligned because of my love for my kids. I've been, uh, uh, people haven't understood why you love them the way you do. I can't help myself. I have three adopted children. They adopted me. I didn't adopt them. I raised two daughters from a second marriage. They called me pastor. I love them. Amen. I get frustrated with them. I get upset with them. I've spanked a couple of them. Amen. Tried to punch one a while back, miss. Thank God. Come on. Give me an amen. But my love for them is amazing. I will do whatever I can to bless them, to see my one hope in life is that when I'm dead and gone, they're going to be a benefit to the world. Amen. And so I have this, and when I read that, I realize how much greater God is. Amen. How much more he loves us. And he don't have grandkids. He just got kids. And he loves us like this. Amen. God comforts the bereaved. I can't imagine making it through life and, and the time uh, when, when somebody departs from this life without the mercy of God. I can't imagine looking at somebody that I've loved who loved God and thinking to myself, well, I hope they made it to heaven. That ain't what mercy told me. Mercy told me that God loved them. East to west, north to south. Amen. God loved them. God comforts the suffering. God comforts the lonely. He sets them in families. If you feel lonely, amen, I'm telling you, you need a family. And the Bible teaches us this is the family of God. My, 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 my family, I love my blood family. But I found out, you know, somebody said blood thicker than water, spirit thicker than blood. Amen. I love the spirit. And thank God when you got blood and spirit. Amen, that you got all of those together, that your family loves God the way you do. He consoles us when we pray. He proves his faithfulness when we test his promises. Amen. Over and over, I have tested God. I have to, he told me, test me. God tests you. Woo Remember that? God tests you. Amen. But also tells us to test him. I have tested God with my tithe and my offering, and God has never let me down. He said, test me in it. Amen. See that don't open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. You have no idea what's in heaven till you believe God for it. You got to keep believing God. Healing comes from heaven. Blessing comes from heaven. Love comes from heaven. God is love. Amen. All these things he pours down. Peace comes from heaven. All these things God has that he pours down. You know, we're after material things so all the time. There's a lot more blessing in life than just material. Amen. So be wealthy with friends and family. Can I get an amen? Amen. And we too become ministers of mercy. When God blessed you and made you full of mercy, now you are a minister of mercy. There are people that need your mercy. Oh, my God. There's some folk that struggle going on with life because they believe that you won't forgive them or you won't be kind to them. They don't deserve it. That's not the point. We never deserved it. Amen. So, therefore, we got to be full of mercy. Watch this psalm. I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. All praise to the God and Father of our Master, Jesus the Messiah. Father of all mercy, Lord have mercy, God of all healing and counseling, amen. He comes alongside us when we go through hard times. Mm. And before you know it, he brings us alongside someone else who is going through hard times so that we can be there for that person just as God was there for us. Hear that again. I'm going through a hard time. God come right along next to me. Walks with me through my hard time. I say, man, I feel strength. I feel mercy. I feel grace. I feel good. 
Amen. Because God's walking with me. And then all of a sudden, I meet somebody else that's going through the same thing I'm going through. If you've ever gone through cancer, guess what? You'll meet somebody else that's going through cancer. You've ever gone through breakups, you'll meet somebody else. You ever gone through financial trouble, you're going to find somebody else bankrupt. And you're going to walk along with them, and you're going to remind them, listen, when I was going through this, Jesus walked with me. He talked to me. He upheld me. Amen. He was there. Mercy was there for me. Amen. And because mercy was there for me, hallelujah, I yielded myself to it. Amen. I believe that it redeemed me. He walked with me. And because of that, let me tell you, I can walk with you. Why did you get comforted? So that you can comfort somebody else. Why don't you go through it? So you can help somebody else go through it. See, if you never got through it, you can't help somebody else go through it. So you got to get through it. Can I get an amen? Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Where you at, preacher? Okay, I found it. Verse 14. Mercy yields. For he knows how we are formed. He remembered that we are dust. Hmm. Keep reading. For as, as for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it. It's gone. And his place remembers no more. What are them dandelions? Is that right? That little white? Remember that? When I was a kid, that was, that was you didn't have a Atari. Or a Xbox or Buy Box or anything else. You had dandelions. You went out there and you grabbed it and you went, and it just dispersed. Nothing. Amen. If you've never sucked a honeysuckle or blowed a dandelion, you ain't country. So you went out there and pulled a honeysuckle, pulled the end out of it, and got that one little drop of nectar. Mm. Some of you said, I wouldn't do that for that one little drop. No, but you sat over there and bash a crawdad head and pinch a tail, amen, to get a little drop of meat. God love you. If you do that, you ought to be able to do a, 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 a honeysuckle. Country, that's who I am. Lord have mercy. He yields. He knows. He remembers he made you from dirt, that we are but dust. I've said this before to you, but it's important for you to understand that we are not as important as we think we are. We came from dirt. Dirt bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of us. Just the dirt. Oh, but we all about the dirt. We wash the dirt. We take selfies of the dirt. We paint the dirt. We fix up the dirt. We operate on the dirt. We stretch the dirt. Amen. We add to the dirt. Amen. We, we hang out with other dirt. Got to get an amen. Ain't nothing with this. See, here's the thing. We come from the earth. The, the source from which something comes provides and determines its identity, ability, capacity, potential, and durability. The product is always linked to the source. So our source, though the Spirit of God dwells in us, we came from the dirt. So because of that, you've you got to understand, uh, a nice wooden chair, amen, just didn't happen. But where did it come from? It came from a tree. Its identity came from its source. It's wood. So it came from that. We came from dirt. Amen. And, and, you know, again, we put deodorant on the dirt. We tan the dirt. Well, like we don't like what we so we tan the dirt. We get dirt suction. Dirt tucks. The substance from which something comes expresses its worth. We cheap as dirt. Mm. I used to hear that phrase, Kenny. Cheap as dirt. Ain't no truth no more. Dirt costs money. Amen. Here's the thing. God looked at us as dirt, and he said, I know you just come from dust. I know how frail you really are. You may have this day to live. You may not make it till tomorrow. One stumble, and everything changes. One slip, and everything shifts. Amen. you dirt. That's all we are. Amen. I know you. And as for you, your days are numbered. But God looks at us and says, you know what? I know. How you. When I read that, I think of his mercy. Our lives are short, fragile. You've got to yield them to God. Again, 
it goes by like the dandelion. I'm 61. Where did it all go? Where did the brown hair go? Where did the wrinkles come from? Lord, how'd I get to be such an old man so fast? And Lord, where'd the wrinkles come from? And Lord, I said, I'll quit right there. I'm looking over at uh, Bob, Kenny. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, in dirt pots. That's where the, the vessel, the only thing good in us is Jesus. Man, I hate to pop your bubble, crack your pot, but we're just dirt. God sees that, and he loves us. He loves us. Do you have things in your home? They're not precious to anyone but to you. They're whatnots. They, they got a crack in them. There's something that a parent picked up on a road trip somewhere, but you covet it. You hold on to it because it's special to you. Amen. You look after it. You, you set it at a high place, or you've hid it away where others can't see. That's how God looks at you. You're special to him. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, he took away and removed your sin. As far as the heavens are from the earth, amen, he loves you that deep from all the stars and the, the sands of the seashore. He loves you like that, and he knows you but dirt, and yet he loves you. And he deposited in himself inside of you that Christ in you is the hope of glory. Wow, oh, what a God. What a God. What a God we serve. Amen. Our lives being short. Mercy. Kind or forgiving treatment of someone who could be treated harshly. Kindness or help given to people who are in a very bad or desperate situation. Amen. Bad or desperate situation. What do they need? Mercy! Mercy! Lord, have mercy! There he was on the road. Amen. Mark chapter 10, as they came into Jericho, his disciples with him, great number of people following him, and there was blind Bartimaeus. Amen. He sat by the highway begging. Amen. And when he heard, somebody say heard, heard. that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He, when he heard that, he had already heard something about Jesus. He might have already heard that he healed a man with mud in his eye or spit in another man's eye. He may have heard about a leper getting his legs back and his limbs back. He may have heard about the widow of Nain's son coming alive. He may have heard about a woman touching the hem of his garment. He heard something, and every one of you have heard something about Jesus. Amen. You've heard something good. You heard about Pat up here who had double brain aneurysms, and God has already healed him twice. You've heard about God taking H.D. who fell out of a tree, died, and his wife resuscitated him. And here he leads prayer meetings on Tuesday night. you heard about the things that God God has done in life, blind Martimaeus heard. He didn't get to see it, but he heard it. Amen. And when he heard about Jesus, he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I don't deserve it. Have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy. And many charged him that he should hush. And there are people telling you, don't pray. Don't go to church. Don't hang out with them believers in Christ. Amen. But I want to tell you, when you get desperate enough in life, when you get to a place and you realize you need mercy, you're not going to shut up. You're going to open up. You're going to say something. Somebody say, say something. Say, have mercy. Uh, have mercy. And men in charge him, keep your mouth shut. But he cried the more. Sometimes you try to make somebody shut up. You ever had a child, you ask them, shh. And that Shh. Wah! They need to get louder because they after something. They hungry. I always found out about kids, babies. It's either the bottom, excuse me, it's the burp, the bottle, or the bottom. That's what I learned. So when that kid started, it always started with the burp. Then I work on the bottom, I mean the bottle. But they want the bottle. Hand them to their mama. But Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me. Verse 49. And Jesus stood still. He was moving. He stopped. And commanded him to be called. 
And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. In other words, there was a mediator. And when he called out, the mediator said to him, Hey, listen, be of good comfort. Rise up. He wants you. Verse 50. And he, casting away his garment, rose, came to Jesus, and Jesus answered, said unto him, What is it that I should do to you? In other words, what do you want? Listen, sometimes it's obvious what people need. But God always asks a question. I want to hear it from you. What is it you want? Well, man, I can't see. It's obvious. No, I want to hear it from you. But I'm, I'm struggling with things in life. I, I'm mentally struggling. I have addictions right now. Well, tell me what it is you want. Tell me what. Let me hear you say it. Amen. So here's the prayer. The blind man said unto him that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight. And what did he do? He started following Jesus. How many know once you take the medicine, amen, and God's healed you, take it till it's empty. And it ain't empty till you're gone. You've got to keep taking it. Blind Bartimaeus, amen, he recognized Christ, son of the Lord, have mercy. He said something. And, you know, listen, everyone can have an opinion about your life and often do, but not everyone should have influence in your life. And at this moment, people had an opinion. Hush, hush. But he didn't allow them to have influence. He kept, he kept hollering more. And the more he hollered, Jesus responded to him. I was up in, a, like I said, up in a, a, a Utah. And I went down to sit with my father-in-law. He's 89 year old. And uh, I'm sitting down there with him. And, and I mean, I just got there. And he, he says, uh, what you want to watch? I says, I don't care. Whatever you like. And he grabbed his uh, remote control, Donald. And he said, NBA. And that TV went to NBA. Then he went, ESPN. And then it went to ESPN. Now, I know some of y'all got that. I ain't. And I'm sitting over there watching an 89-year-old man. He's ahead of me in technology right now. It's voice activated. You see, that's what happened to blind Bartimaeus. He couldn't see him. But he called, Lord, have mercy. And it activated something in Christ. Amen. And he responded to that. Oh, hey, my father-in-law walked out of the room. I picked that thing up and went, Longmire. He came back and said, where's basketball? I said, hey, it, I don't know. Amen. So he proclaimed. Voice act recognition is the ability to receive and interpret dictation or to understand and carry out spoken requests. We activate blessings on our lives and others with our voice. When we say it, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Sometimes you've got to raise your voice. He's got to hear you say it. Well, he knows what I'm thinking. Listen, unless you can't talk, talk. You ain't had no problem talking. You walk up to the sonic, hit the button, tell them what you want. You never sit there and go, y'all know what I want. You know I want a chili foot long with cheese and onions on there? Tater tots. And one of them 42-ounce big Dr. Peppers. Crushed ice, fill it to the top. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. You look, they don't know what you want. Talk to him. Tell him what you want. I got to start closing. I got way too much to preach. Y'all going to have to come out to the next campus to hear me the rest of this. Lord, have mercy. Jesus taught us, and I'll, I'll close quickly here. And when he saw them, Matthew chapter 5. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside, and he sat down with the disciples. He began to teach them. See, oftentimes we, we proclaim as if preaching is greater than teaching. Uh, I don't care if it's preaching or teaching. I just pray you learn it. Pray I'm learning Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. I don't know how God's got things planned. I just want to be there with him, be a part of the purpose of God. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, right things, they'll be filled. I've often said a lot of times folk are never filled with God because they never come with an expectation. They're not hungry and thirsty. It's hard for you to eat when you're not hungry. But man, when you're hungry. When I went through the fast, I literally, I, I told you this, I ate some ribeye. I got high as a kite on that ribeye. I was ribeye high. 
because I hadn't had anything rich like that in three weeks. Oh, what a blessing. Amen. When you're hungry, oh, it just all tastes good. So stay hungry after God. When you could have been on Sunday, be hungry. If you're not, you're not, you're not going to get anything. Be hungry. God, I'm hungry. And then verse 7, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Again, I say unto you, poor in spirit, kingdom of God. Mourn, comforted. Meek, earth. Hunger, thirst, field. But when he got to mercy, he said mercy is its own reward. What greater reward can I give you than to tell you that if you are merciful to somebody else, that mercy is going to come back to you. Amen. Perhaps the merciful are shown mercy because there's no more powerful way to speak to an unbeliever to know mercy is coming back. Without mercy, we'd be damned. We wouldn't be able to make it. We wouldn't have a life next. Without mercy, we'd never experience the release from guilt that accompanies our sin. Amen. Listen, nor could we release those who sinned against us. Mer you know, when it, it, was, it was sin that told us that we had mercy, needed mercy. Now watch this. Micah says, he showed you what is good. People have asked me before, Pastor, what's the will of God? And I've always used Micah. He showed you what is good. He told us what his will was. This is what he required. Act justly. Love mercy. Walk humbly with your God. Don't be arrogant. Arrogant. Walk humbly, but love mercy. When he said love mercy, he means fall in love with mercy. Fall in love with it. Mercy begots mercy. It comes back to you. Do you know why some people are so mean in life? Because they never showed mercy. Therefore, they're not going to get mercy. But when you're merciful, it comes back to you. So you got to marry mercy, and you got to divorce guilt. See, guilt, guilt, guilt comes on your life because of the things we've done, the hurt we've experienced, that we've caused others. Guilt, guilt's a powerful force. And here, here's the thing. Without guilt, there would be no, by definition, no need for mercy. Why would you need mercy if it wasn't guilt there? Amen. And, and then guilt is a terrible reality that mercy is more wonderful than guilt is terrible. Divorce is a horrible thing. I know that. Putting away is worse than divorce. There's two different things in the Bible. Amen. So there's putting away, putting someone away, a woman away, and then there's divorce. Sometimes divorce is very difficult. You can drag on. Guilt tries to hold on to you. Guilt tries to squander you. Guilt tries to take from you. Guilt, that's what guilt, and so it, it's hard to break free from it. But if I can ever divorce it and say I married mercy, mercy is my companion. Amen. That's the good things I want in life. It was marrying mercy that made me want to stop living with guilt. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. Mercy. You know, when blind Bartimaeus said, Lord, have mercy. The Greek translation is this. Mercy, have mercy. In other words, he recognized that the manifestation of the man Christ Jesus was literally mercy. That mercy was walking among them. That's who he was. And when mercy, he wasn't cast in judgment. This is the one who told those who picked up stones to stone a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery when he said to them, let him that is without sin cast the first stone. This is mercy walking before us. This is the one that met a woman at a, at a well and told her everything about her, even though she had five husbands and the one she was with now was not her husband. He didn't cast disparaging stones at her. Mercy had mercy. Now, I'm telling you that there will be a judgment of God. I'm not trying to just tell you that ain't going to happen. But right now, it's about mercy. Psalm 103, as far as the east is from the west, the earth from the heavens, mercy, have mercy. Because I don't know everyone in this room. You'd think I would, but I don't. I got to ask this question. If right now you need mercy, put your hand up and back down. I'm just looking above your heads. I ain't looking at your faces. Just hold your hands up. Right now you need mercy. Say this with me. Lord, have mercy on me. I'm dust, made from dirt, fragile. Come on, lift your voice. Fragile. Have mercy. 
Heal my body. Touch my mind. Give my spirit a tenacity to hang on. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me. I need you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy.